Hi there, welcome to another edition of IndyCar with me, Gordon Ross. Now you might notice from the background that this isn't actually the IndyCar that I'm in today. And the reason for that is, well, partly because the IndyCar has a flat tyre and I've had to run a person home who normally I wouldn't have to run home. So I'm using uh, the family car instead for IndyCar today. So forgive the slightly changed circumstances. Today's show is all about um, the British state and what it is up to at the moment. And I don't know about you, but watching the television screens, um, certainly over the last 24 hours, has showed the, the sort of drink fest that has been going on in England with hundreds or thousands of um, inebriated young people and middle-aged people, who should probably know better, uh, carousing around the streets of London, happily uh, not socially distancing and spreading as much disease as possible as they can uh, in the short time that the pubs are actually open for. Now this is, I think, uh, rather typical of the attitude, not only of uh, England generally, uh, to its its own lockdown, but also to the, the government itself in allowing this sort of thing to carry on and then happily blaming the people who uh, are out carousing as the ones to blame for it. Now when you have a bunch of people who are not capable, uh, for reasons of inebriation, of socially distancing themselves from each other to keep the rest of the population safe, then a government's duty is actually to intervene and prevent them from doing any harm. But uh, this government has a very hands-off approach. Boris Johnson is quite happy to allow millions of people to go anywhere they like uh, and to crawl all over each other, touch whoever they wish, queue up with absolutely no social distances at all, get completely blotted and... Um, and basically just completely ignore all the rules of social distancing and all the best efforts, incidentally, I might add, of uh, the bar staff who are trying desperately to keep them safe despite the chaos. I think this is uh, indicative of a, a change, a cultural identity in England, which is basically based on drunkenness uh, and the ability to do what you like whenever you wish. Um, while having Spitfires flying overhead with We Love the NHS written on the bottom of, of them. And this is, I think, um, where Britain is at at the moment. It is at a stage in its life where it is trying to assert itself, trying, England is basically trying to reinvent itself and decide what it is. It comes out of lockdown confirming what most of us already knew it is, which is a share of irresponsible drunks uh, to the you know, who want to go to the pub every five minutes. Now, there's nothing wrong, of course, with going to pubs. But when millions of people crowd into pubs all, all across England um, with the express wish of getting as blotted as possible um, so that they, they're basically making up for uh, four months of not drinking. They've had abstinence for four months. Now they are going on a bender. And basically, the, the images shown by the BBC and ITV over the last few days are embarrassing, completely embarrassing, as usual. Um, we often hear of uh, English football fans, particularly going abroad to Europe, and all we see is drunken fighting and people throwing chairs at policemen and smashing bottles over each other's heads. It's not a pretty picture. And to me, Britain seems to have a new, or Britain, I, I would say England as Britain, has this schizophrenic character of, on the one hand, um, soppy sentimentalism for the war, uh, which of course was horrible, but nobody remembers the worst bits of it. Um, and this, uh, I don't know, this attachment where Spitfires have to be in absolutely bloody everything. Um, every time there's a commemoration of any sort, there has to be a Spitfire in it. It's the 72nd anniversary of the founding of the National Health Service. This is the same health service, incidentally, which the Tories in England have been consistently underfunding for about the last 30 years, to the point where they're about to privatise it completely, and they already have disbanded the, um, the various health authorities in England and privatised them all in presumably preparation for the great privatisation that comes later on when America moves into our healthcare market. So... From, uh, from my viewpoint, it seems that um, England, basically, its cultural identity is drink sodden, down the pub, um, waving Union Jacks and flying Spitfires overhead and reminiscing about the war. It really doesn't have a clue about where it goes next. Uh, I think that's rather sad for friends in England who, who have to put up with this 
which I'm hoping is a minority of people are, are behaving so badly. And also the tens of thousands of people are tripping up to Scotland in caravans and motorbikes and uh, camper vans, trying to holiday in a country which is locked down where everything is shut uh, and bringing with them the risk of spreading the disease still further. At the moment, it seems to me, the, the British state, or England as Britain, as I like to sort of characterise it now, is planning its future um, by ethnically cleansing it's electronic media. This is the latest thing. Britain has, uh, as of the last two days, just bought a 20% equity share of a bankrupt satellite company, which was planning to um, surround the world with over 500 satellites in a constellation to provide um, internet uh, to places all over the world which don't have any cable connections. Now, remember that Starlink, which is Elon Musk's uh, SpaceX company, has already got thousands of satellites in orbit. Um, it's certainly hundreds of satellites ahead of where this this company is that the British government has decided to buy a fifth of. Uh, but it also seems to me that the British government will do anything rather than rely on a global positioning system, satellite system being developed by the European Union, which is almost ready to go. Um, the satellite system by Elon Musk in the United States, the Starlink system, will be ready to go in the next couple of years as well. Britain, as usual, lagging miles behind, has bought into, well, basically the third place player on this marketplace in the hope that Britain will somehow in the future um, have its own GPS satellite system or a bit of it so they don't have to rely on those nasty foreigners in Europe to supply their global positioning on their smartphones or for their military uh, vehicles. So there is this ethnic cleansing going on uh, from the English government to try to decontaminate the British telecoms industry from all kinds of foreign interests. They've also announced a, a huge um, skidding U-turn today to try to kick Huawei out of the 5G network in infrastructure in the United Kingdom. Now that's impossible because Huawei designed the hardware, like the physical black boxes with all the electronics in them that sit at the side of the road and at the bottom of um, uh, cell tower masts. And these are essential pieces of equipment that relay signals from one cell to another, otherwise your cell phone 5G network wouldn't work. The British government now says, well, not the government, GCHQ now says that it's reassessed the threat um, posed by this Chinese company's hardware. Uh, in fact, as far as I know, and I could be corrected on this later on, the GCHQ dismantled a lot of hardware uh, made by Huawei and couldn't find anything buried in it or in its software that could in any way do anything to compromise British security. But you have to remember that the existing hardware for 4G already tracks you, tracks your use, can predict what you're going to buy, when you're going to buy it. It knows your credit history, it knows your name, address, your, na your age, your gender. It knows a lot more about you than Huawei does, believe me. And that is something that we don't seem to be bothered about. But when Huawei come along, which is just a Chinese company that's making basically boxes with wires and connections and stuff, machinery, uh, to build this new 5G network, somehow or other, uh, the British state has managed to get itself to believe that the Chinese are going to secretly spy on us by using these uh, electronic devices that we have already checked and not found any evidence that there's any significant risk. So my question is, how far is the British state going to go with this? How many other companies are going to be kicked out for being foreign? Um, remember that I was telling you just the other day that the British state is quite happy to work with other European companies when it suits their political purpose to do it, uh, including trying to uh, create a, an artificial shell company to look like there's a British space programme operating out of Scotland when there actually isn't. Uh, when the actual space programme in Scotland is being run by a Scottish company and launching from Scottish launch sites, which are nothing at all to do with the British government. So, as you look at it at the moment, the world is changing. All the countries of the world at the moment are pulling up the drawbridges, closing the front doors, and basically kicking out anybody who's not of their particular set of people. We've noticed in China recently now, that the clampdown on Hong Kong is now complete. The protesters have given up 
because China is now threatening to arrest a whole lot of them and sling them all in jail on the mainland, to the point now where the protesters are too frightened now to campaign for their human rights because they know that to do so would actually be to end their human rights. So China is locking down its country. America has shut its door to imports of all kinds. Uh, so its internal economy is what's running America at the moment. And that can't last forever, believe it or not. And then we have Britain, or should I say England, which is determined as one of the smallest countries in the world to cut itself off from its major European marketplace deliberately and to divest itself of anything European, including satellites uh, and anything Chinese, including the essential equipment that they say they need for their 5G network. It's got to the point where this ethnic cleansing has got ridiculous. I mean, who ever heard of racism in electronics? But that is what is actually happening at the moment. Britain is becoming racist about where its electronics are made and who makes them uh, and who fits them and who launches them into space. It's getting pathetically ridiculous. However, um, that was really it. I, I, I just wanted to sort of make a comment on the way things are going today, but also that the country is being led by three men now. It's not being, being led by a government, it's not being led by a cabinet. It's basically Boris Johnson, Michael Gove and Dominic Cummings. And the little sort of triad of the three of them, with Boris as the front man, with Michael Gove as a, a sort of political fixer, and with Dominic Cummings as the ideological mastermind behind it all, they are actually running the country into the ground. They're trying to mould it into what they think it should be, despite what anybody in England voted for, or anybody in the rest of the United Kingdom voted for. And this is why you'll find that the pressure on people now to think about independence is going to increase rapidly as things get worse and worse and worse, more and more and more racist, more and more isolationist, fewer and fewer exports and imports coming into and out of places like Scotland, which relies on them, and the prices of goods going up dramatically as the doors close and the tariffs go up, because this is where the world is heading at the moment. The global pandemic and the global financial system is basically crashed and because of this confluence of things happening all at the one time, the world is at a sort of nexus. It's at a turning point for the entire global economy and for every country on the planet. And the countries which choose wisely in this and are most robust and best future-proofed will be the ones that survive in the best shape. And frankly, the United Kingdom is just not one of those anymore. And this is why I believe that Scotland is now, more than ever, going to look far more attractive to voters as an independent country than it will do shackled to the dying hulk of the British Empire, which really is confused about what it is. It can't decide whether it wants to be drunk, get a haircut or fly Spitfires, but really that is basically what England has become. It's Spitfires, haircuts and getting pissed. And that is really all that there is to it now. Scotland has higher, more lofty ambitions than that, and we want to do a lot more for our people than just wave Union Jacks and fly Spitfires over them and clap for a health service which really needs more funding, higher salaries and more staff to look after people. That's it from IndyCar today. I'll talk to you again tomorrow. But be of good cheer. The fact that England is becoming racist in te technology terms as well now um, is just making it look even more stupid on the international stage, even more pathetic than it looked before, which is very, very sad. England could be a great country again if they stopped messing about flying Spitfires and looking backwards at the war. Why not look forward and do something useful with the English economy? Why not get exporting again? Why not build the economy back up instead of which they are waving their Union Jacks, they're celebrating all kinds of centenaries about the war, are getting drunk and they've all got great haircuts. Well, thank you, but that's not my idea of the future. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.